spiritual poems of encouragement for the soul by Michelle Staddard, also author of Broken But Not Bound, another illustrated masterpiece for those of you who enjoy spiritual poetry. Some of the works by my son, Omani Staddard, links in the description. Holla at me. Peace. What's going on, folks out there? My name is Ottomir, and this is the Hard Black Truth. Thank you for tuning in to another Monday Rundown. Today is Monday, October the 11th, 2021. And let's get right into it. Facebook was down Monday for several hours and people were like, oh, it wasn't just black folks. Everyone kind of, you know, we're, we're talking about it because folks are so used to being able to go on their social media and see what's going on. It's kind of scary when you really think about it, but what I found interesting about this story is that the outage came on the heels of a so-called whistleblower. Now, this so-called whistleblower was making headlines because she made the claim that Facebook decided to do what's in the best interest of making money and keeping subscribers rather than do what's in the best interest of the country. She actually went about blaming Facebook for what led up to the January 6th assault on the Capitol by disgruntled Trump voters. Uh, my whole thing to that, I, I don't trust any party in this whole story, this whole situation. Um, Facebook has done very well with censorship. You could just ask Riza Islam. See, they'll start off with going after somebody like uh, I don't know, those conspiracy theorist guys out there, and then they, they delete them and ban them off the internet, just banish them, and then we're all like, hey, great, and then they turn around and go after, like I said, folks like Riz Islam. So always keep your third eye open whenever you see stories like this. Um, you know, things kind of hit the fan, but I don't think any of us who are into our phones will actually know exactly what hit the fan. Uh, nevertheless, keep your eyes open. In other news, I had to cover this because I did a video on this guy. This is Vonk Savox uh, Booker. Uh, this dude, I made a video about him because he got caught out there in the boonies being assaulted by several suspect white supremacists and the white friends that he was booed up with where he went out there. None of them really lifted a finger to help. They were all crying and pleading, please let them go. And I, and I talked about it. I, I, I even went into a bit of detail describing this dude here. You see that big cheesy coon smile on him. Well, he, he's taken several positions that aren't too popular. And in my opinion, will be a detriment to black society. But he's taken to social media recently talking about reparations and, and so many words intimating that reparations should go to everybody. Let me stop the bus right there. I'm going to tell you as someone who's a non-foundational black American who grew up in this country, believing the entire time, having known the atrocities that black, po black folks have dealt with systemically and continue to deal with and knowing that there was an idea there was a plan out there and there still is and it's called reparations i even felt entitled to those reparations believe it or not right it took some growing up and understanding my position in the grand scheme of things and you know what i'm at the point right now where reparations are owed but if you're gonna do it you need to do it right and you have to do that respectfully and the only way to do that respectfully that is going to be right is to acknowledge the descendants of slaves in what is now known as the United States of America. We need to cut the BS out. And this here trying to please everybody and say this should go here and go there. It, if you do that, it'll go nowhere. And it'll all be for naught. Okay? You have to do it right. It has to start with the descendants of the American slaves. And America is that beacon of light and hope and all that good stuff. If you do it right here you will see everything else fall into place. Moving on from the coonery, you have an ex-Tesla worker who won over a hundred million dollars in a lawsuit where he sued Tesla for racism in the work environment. And good for you. And I hope you get every penny. Now, the amount I would say compared to everything else and, and what was actually described, it's pretty damn high. I know that's gonna turn heads, makes excellent fodder for the newspapers, but they do that for a reason. Tesla is 
more than likely going to turn around and appeal and seek some sort of settlement for a much, much lower price. Still well into the millions of dollars, but I guess this is the first step in making sure that they pay for allowing the racism to take place. Now, I just did a story last week where we were talking about how black folks are underrepresented in Silicon Valley and a few that do make it there to these big heavyweight companies, the few that do make it there and get to work at their institutions and campuses are constantly harassed simply because they're black. That has to end. And many companies have done what they can or are trying to do what they can as best as they can to at least give the appearance that they are equal opportunity across the board. Uh, but more needs to be done. And this is undeniable proof that racism and white supremacy still exists. You're not handing out $137 million verdicts simply because someone's feelings were hurt. No, this was some real foul crap that this guy had to deal with. And fortunately enough for him, he had his day in court and they decided in his favor. Speaking of favor, all of y'all folks out there, you know who you are. You tried to convince us that Biden was in our best interest. They trotted out that woman and, you know, folks were talking about she walking around and chucks and pearls and all this other nonsense. Now look at you. The daggone funding for HBCUs went from $45 million down to $2 million. Now, if I'm not mistaken, President Donald Trump actually put money out there. He put money down on the HBCUs because the HBCUs were largely getting ready to fail. They're getting ready to go under. And Trump actually said, yeah, let's make sure that we do something for the I can't do his voice. But you get what I mean. And now Biden is coming to place with his new spending plan. And all of a sudden, the budget gets cut from $45 billion to $2 billion? Come on, man. We give more money abroad to other nations than we do our own institutions here in the United States of America. And it's a shame that black folks simply can't get a fair shake. We are stuck sitting here trying to convince the world that our institutions, our livelihood, our culture, us as a people should be respected. But we get no respect when we turn around and vote for folks without any promise or, or anything. It was supposed to, it was supposed to be no tangibles, no vote. Somewhere along the line, folks allowed themselves to be confused that it's the lesser of two evils. It's we got to get this madman out of office. It was Democratic down ballot. All of these stupid ass things that put that man in office. And this is the result. And oh man, I know that you guys saw this story, this disgusting story. Oh, it, it, it pissed me off just watching it, but you know what? I'm, nothing really shocks or surprises me anymore. It just leaves me with a feeling of anger. We talk about reparations and why and how and should. This black man's a paraplegic. He has no control over his legs. He explained to the officer who had pulled him over for whatever reason that he's a paraplegic. He can't walk. He needed to have assistance getting into the vehicle. Well, the officer was having none of it because the officer had to run a canine around the car. And now the thing that they do is they they take the people out of the vehicle. I guess that police department does in order to run a canine around the vehicle. On a side note, I can't stand them damn police dogs. I hate the way that they're being used. I would wish that they'll do away with the entire program. Problem is you do away with the program with the canines. They turn around, bring in these daggone monstrous robots that they are already testing out in the streets. And they're gonna turn around and weaponize those robots to have glitches and mistakes that inadvertently just kill black people. So it's like, you're damn if you do, you're damn if you don't. I'm just predicting what I see ahead of, ahead of me. But this dude was brutalized by a police officer because he couldn't walk. Dragged off, and, and uh, I don't know if you get to see the screenshot or not, but as they, as he, they, as they drug him off, his pants had fell below his belt. It was. It was awful to see this and you know those officers should be charged they should they literally should be charged they should be arrested they should they should be fired all of those things you can't have these folks going around treating black people like this and we got to stop allowing it we got to put our 
foot on the ground at some point and just say, no, you're not going to do this. You're not going to get away with this. We're going to protest. We're, we're going to come to your doorstep. We're Pull up summer and all of that good stuff. But it remains to see how this story turns out. I don't know. Now, going from bad to worse, I'm reporting this. I'm not going to get into it, but I have to at least put it out there. I'm sure more is to come. This young man was an aspiring everything that you would want to say that's positive about a black male. And he died still under quote unquote mysterious circumstances. Uh, they tried to claim that the the weather and nature took its course. Fish bit up his body. Turtles bit up his body. He had his jaw sawed off. Stop the story right there. This young man was killed and his body mutilated. And you're not going to blame nature for something as blatant and inexcusable. You can't ignore his jaw being sawed off. Someone took a silver near, much in a way that they did and have been doing for the past several hundred years. Again, black folks, we don't really have time to be sitting here arguing with one another over petty ass things when we have active racist white supremacist murdering bastards out there who do this kind of thing to someone who was everything that you would look at as positive i can't stress that enough it wouldn't have made it any less egregious if if this had been done to a pookie or, or or whatever like that but the fact that it's being done at all folks watch your backs out there this was uh out there in mississippi if i'm not mistaken now before i move on to my closing story I did have to point out that the bastard who was playing monkey sounds and, and nigger music uh, to his neighbors, uh, John Eskelden, he, we have a photo of him. There you got it right there in front of you. That's his photo. And I may have link posted in the description on this one as well. They got photos of his wife. They got his work background history. They got his daughter's name. I mean, they just bought out all the stops. They're bringing so much heat, so much pressure on this dude. I'm surprised he hasn't moved out himself. That's just my thinking. But you know what? I blame all of the black folks who went out there because the woman in this case, she tried to build some sort of, you know, diverse coalition. I don't think she wanted to get to the point where you had quote unquote black lives matter at that person's doorstep. But here we are. You're not just going to sit there and post up a story about black people being harassed simply because they're black by a white racist neighbor and not get folks to go out there. Now they've given blanket coverage to the black lives matter organization. I ain't particularly fond of that because I know that there are other boots on the ground, but it is what it is. Keep applying that pressure, folks. Let's move on to what I really wanted to talk about. And that is the fact that Dave Chappelle made sure to tell everyone in his comedy routine, The Closer. It's on Netflix now. Go ahead and watch it before they try to do something. Honestly, I think they put the story out so that people would go and watch it. Because when I heard that they were out there trying to protest against it, I'm like, well, let me go see what's going on before they pull it because I heard a lot of things now what I found was because he did make a comment about uh, Asians being beaten up by black people but he completely played it off to the side and he did it in a way that in my opinion showed solidarity with black folks so to the folks out there uh, claiming otherwise I respectfully disagree it is what it is I do know he you know in a situation with his married life and bottom line is we need to stop putting so much stock behind these celebrities but appreciate them when they do the work you know of, of getting a message out there because the message was definitely put out there and what we have now is a phony outrage from people who i mean you would you would think that folks wouldn't understand the irony of having someone who is white work on a show 
that's supposed to be speaking from a black point of view and now all of a sudden you're angry at Dave Chappelle because he did a joke or a skit about a certain group of people that you identify with. So now you're angry. Now you're upset. And now you have phony ass black organizations coming out the woodwork trying to claim that they are some sort of black coalition for justice or some crap like that. Go have several seats. i leave you with the screenshot of the shade room because they have continuously shown us time and time again whose side they're on. This is the shade room, folks. A lot of you folks get your content and stories from these people or this person or whatever this entity is. You're sitting there talking about pull the special. No, you can go to hell. Dave Chappelle said something that was necessary, okay? You're sitting here trying to play this game to gain sympathy and to try to put yourself in a minority position because you understand what the hell is going on. You understand that black folks are standing up for themselves. So you're trying to pull every trick out of the book. You're even rewriting some of these books and creating new tricks so that you can turn around and point the finger at us black folks and call us oppressive and say that we're the ones causing all the damage and all the strife. No, none of you have had to deal with the things that black folks have had to deal with. None of you. And I could stress this and I could go on, but you know what? I've said my piece. Shout out to Dave Chappelle. Stand strong. He did make sure to mention that this would be his last one because he's going to push it to the edge. And he really did. And if you took some of those jokes and just chopped them up devoid of context, yeah, they do sound awful. But you know, the point of comedy is when you're good at it, you can take it holistically. And it's funny. And I laughed. So you guys let me know what you feel about everything. Chime in with your comments, thoughts. Please like, share, subscribe. Hit me up on my cash app if you appreciate this. My name is Otomir. Holla at me. Peace.